What is up, everybody? Our second emergency live episode today here on the Pack a Day podcast. What a freaking day. I, I'm all over the place. I think everyone's emotions are probably all over the freaking place. Aaron Jones is gone. David Bakhtiari is gone. Darnell Savage is gone. John Runyon Jr. is gone. Josh Jacobs is in. Xavier freaking McKinney is in. Are you kidding me? This is insane. I do have some great news. I have officially hacked the Packers free agency system. In 2019, I, an idiot, scheduled a full day training, not that I was in, that I was putting on at work and it was stuck in a training for eight hours, or like, like 10 hours, because I had to prep for it and everything. And of course, you get, <laughs> you get the uh, Zadarius Smith news, you get the Preston Smith news, you get the Adrian Amos news, and everything's coming in, and I just want to tweet about it and talk about it and everything, and I can't do anything because I'm in this stupid training because I'm an idiot. So what happens? Of course, I'm going to learn my lesson, and that's never going to happen again. Today, I have to go to Appleton for an appointment down in Appleton and end up immediately as I get into that appointment, I am like the, the news of Jacobs comes in. And then as I start driving home, immediately it's the Aaron Jones news. And then I get to do the quick podcast for like 25 minutes. And as soon as I get done with that, what happens? Xavier McKinney signs as I'm at my next meeting. And I'm supposed to have something else that I now canceled, but I have hacked the system. All I have to do all I have to do, guys, it's in my hands, is schedule a shit ton of meetings all day on day one of free agency and magical things will happen. So you are welcome, but I am so happy to be talking and so happy to not have anything on my plate until now 7 p.m. tonight so we can talk about free agency for as long as we want to talk about free agency and what a shit ton of stuff that we have to talk about I talked about Aaron Jones. I talked about Josh Jacobs on the previous show. I will obviously do more of that. Super Chats will go to the top of the list. If you guys have any questions, I will get to them. I will try to get to as many questions as humanly possible. I've got a Mountain Dew acid reflux be damned. Uh, we've got a ton to go over, and I am on uh, caffeine pretty much only at this point. Let's talk about Xavier McKinney, though. For all the emotions that are out there, for the raw, unadulterated roller coaster ride that today has been, Xavier McKinney, I cannot stress enough how perfect, how picture perfect of a fit he is within this Packers new defense. It is like you drew Xavier McKinney up in a lab and said, man, this is the exact safety you want. In fact, Zach Cruz did it perfectly when Jeff Halfley was joking around and like basically painting the picture of his perfect safety in that press conference. Uh, Zach immediately tweeted, wow, that sounds a lot like Xavier McKinney. And he was 1 million percent right. This is the guy. And I, I talked about it a little bit when I went on my Justin Simmons episode earlier this week. And when Justin Simmons when I, it was released and I went through and I was so excited about Simmons being released. I thought he was going to be a really good fit and everything. And I went back and I watched him just at post safety. I wanted to see how he played in cover one as the deep safety. And my biggest takeaway from Justin Simmons, who's a good safety, no question about it, had a little bit of a down year last year in comparison to previous years. I think he was still, I know he was still second team all pro, but good safety. But my biggest takeaway watching Justin Simmons was, oh my God, I'm even more in love with Xavier McKinney after watching some of the other safeties play single high safety after Xavier McKinney. Like it was just that impressive. There were multiple plays where he made from center field ranging to the sidelines and breaking up passes, making interceptable plays. Like it was unbelievable. And if you want to talk about a freaking upgrade, we can talk about like, all right, how's it going to be going from Aaron Jones to, to Josh Jacobs? And there's going to be some questions there. Xavier McKinney is so much better than anything the Packers had at safety last year or the year before that. I don't even know where to begin it, you were on a different stratosphere of playing style. It is the picture perfect fit at free safety with everything that you want to be able to play in that position after a complete inconsistent roller coaster ride of a lot of times frustrating play from safeties, not making tackles, not making the play on the ball, not being able to have any playmaking ability to go make picks. I know Savage had the big pick, obviously, against the Cowboys, but outside of that, it was completely inconsistent play. Really since the year before, so what, probably 2021 Adrian Amos, where he was still pretty good at that point. And McKinney, by the way, as good as Amos was, McKinney will be a significant step above, in my opinion, even where Adrian Amos was. 
And that should tell you all you need to know. Even prime Green Bay, Adrian Amos, McKinney is a step above that. Now they paid for it. 17 mil per year, four years, 68 million. This is a huge contract for a safety. And maybe one of the key takeaways that we need to at least have a discussion about today is Green Bay put a ton of money, a ton of money into what's generally considered non-premium positions, running back and safety. Now it makes sense. These were needs for Green Bay. Safety was especially a need for Green Bay. And we just talked about Xavier McKinney was basically drawn up in a lab to be the perfect safety in this defense. That is a great thing. You are happy to pay for that. And as I was seeing some of these contracts come in for some of the safeties today, uh, I was looking at them and I'm like, like Bayard, right? And what, Bayard got what, like two years, 14, 15 million, two years, 15 million, I want to say. Like, I'm, I'm just thinking like, man, if I have the choice of like two years, 15 million for Bayard at like seven and a half, or if I have to pay like double that for McKinney, like give me Xavier McKinney over two Kevin Bayards a million times over. And somebody asked me last week of like, would you rather have Xavier McKinney or would you rather have like a Jordan Fuller and a, you know, Julian Blackman, for example, I said, give me the Xavier McKinney. We you, Green Bay can find a box safety. They can find a box safety. If, if they need to, they could start Anthony Johnson Jr. at that spot. It's not ideal, but they could do that. They could go get a J Ron curse. Who's going to be a super cheap, probably like one year, $3 million signing. There's a variety of players that they could get at that spot. They will be able to find a box safety in the draft that you will be totally good with period. End of story. That other safety, that free safety, that rangy safety, the playmaking safety, the one that you need to do everything that has to put the word safe in safety. He has to be the last line of defense. He has to be able to break down in space. He has to be able to make plays on the ball. He, you have to have somebody that is legit at that spot. There was really a no, no other perfect option. Fuller could have done it. Blackman could have done it. Uh, like they would have been fine, but no one to the level of a Xavier McKinney. This on the back end of the defense is massive. And this will make the the ability of that box safety, whoever it ends up being, will have a lot more freedom because Xavier McKinney is behind him and is going to allow that person to be all over the place because McKinney's going to have everything covered on the back end. This is going to make Jair Alexander and Carrington Valentine and Eric Stokes is going to make their job easier because they're going to have a safety that's going to have the range to get to the sidelines down the field might actually make it so that they can play a little bit underneath some of that stuff because they have that player on the second level. This will make a lot of things happen. And there's nobody that's happier right now than Jeff Halfley because you went from a safety room where you just didn't have the piece that you needed to run the defense that he wants to run. And like I said, you could have found a Jordan Fuller and that would have been fine, but there is a difference between fine and great. And say what you want to say about the Jones situation, which is still raw and, um, Brutally raw. I'll just put it that way. One of the big things that I have said is when you're looking at a Super Bowl contending team, if you really want to be a Super Bowl contender, it's great that Green Bay has a lot of really good players on their roster, but you need great players if you want to be a Super Bowl contending team. You have to be great at a variety of different positions. And Josh Jacobs, two years ago, not last year, but two years ago, and that's the Josh Jacobs that you're hoping you get, he was a first team all pro legitimately great player legitimately like through the roof all pro running back unbelievable if you get that you get one of those great players Xavier McKinney is to me a legitimate all pro caliber safety a legitimately great safety that has the ability to be another one of those players and now you still have five picks in the top 100 that you can continue to stock talent through the draft and now you need those other players on the roster Jordan Love took a huge step towards being great this past year at the most important position of all positions. Zach Tom continues to take a step. Now, I don't know if he's ever going to get to that, like all pro pro bowl, like high end pro bowl level of play, but he is bordering on that already. Like can Elton Jenkins even take a step up? Uh, you know, obviously you've got all the talent at wide receiver and tight end. Can any of them become great? Rashawn Gary through portions of his career in early last year, was in that conversation. He fell off. He needs to be consistently great if he wants to be that player. Quay Walker, a lot of potential. Jair, we know. Can he get back to being all pro first team great at corner? But it's the greatness that usually sets you apart. And Green Bay today brought themselves the opportunity to have two great players on their roster, two all pro caliber players on their roster. That's what they're hoping for. Like I said with Josh Jacobs on the last episode, there is cause for concern and there should be a legitimate, like a little bit nervousness of what we saw from Josh Jacobs last year. It can be explained. 
It can be explained by a crappy coach, a really awful set of quarterbacks, and a situation that was not set up for Josh Jacobs to succeed. And now he's going to a place with a great coach and a great offensive mind, a great quarterback, or at least he's getting to that point, and a really good quarterback, if nothing else, right? And a ton of talent on offense and a scheme that is going to set Josh Jacobs up for success. And that should hopefully unlock the 2022 version, but there's no guarantee that that will happen. With McKinney, there's less risk. The thing that you love about McKinney and the thing, honestly, too, about Aaron Jones, right? Or sorry, about Josh Jacobs. This is one of those situations where we've talked about the timeline for Green Bay, where you want to keep it sort of similar. Everyone's in their early to mid 20s. And with Aaron Jones, he was pushing 30. I'm still not saying it's the right move. I'm not explaining it away, but he was pushing 30. Josh Jacobs, 26. That's that's younger. That stays within that same timeline. Xavier McKinney is 24. As of right now, I think he's the same age as Anthony Johnson Jr. or like right around the same age. He's still very much within that core. And that's the thing that you love. I have always, always, always said, if you are going to make the big splash in free agency, like they did with Xavier McKinney, you want it to, you want your cake and you want to eat it too. You want the young player who still fits every single timeline that you are currently on that can be an all pro caliber player that is going to be potentially one of the best players at his position. And you want all of it. If, if you start getting into the, you're, you know, paying huge contracts to the 30 year old guys, then it gets a little bit more worrisome. But this is basically what Green Bay did, in my opinion, is they basically paid in a huge amount of money, right? But for like another first round pick, this is like a big time add to their current roster at somebody who's still only 24 years old as of right now. A huge, huge add. I'll go through my notes really quick that I had on McKinney. These were pre signing McKinney. And if you noticed my notes, if you listened earlier, it's not like my notes were super complimentary of Josh Jacobs. And I went over that. These were my notes on Xavier McKinney. Six foot 201 safety from the Giants, 24 years old. It turns 25 in August. So we will, he's going to get really old. He's going to get 25 in August. So, uh, you know, brace yourself. Second round pick in 2020 had a 5.82 relative athletic score. Uh, the contract projection at the time was four years, 54 million. Uh, he obviously went above that by another 14 million. Uh, PFF grade last year was an 87.8. The year before that was a 61.2. And the year before that was a 75.4. So coming off easily the best season of his career. And 116 tackles, a half sack, three picks, 11 passes defended, one forced fumble, two fumble recoveries. In coverage, uh, quarterbacks went 33 of 54 when targeting him. 61.1% completion percentage, only 288 yards on 54 attempts, no touchdowns, three interceptions. Quarterbacks when throwing at Xavier McKinney had a quarterback rating of 52.1. For example, for those hoping for Antoine Winfield, Antoine Winfield had 85.3 and that was really good. McKinney was 52.1. He only had seven missed tackles this past year. Seven. By the way, Antoine Winfield had 10. Seven missed tackles, a 5.7% missed tackle percentage. To compare this, by the way, to Darnell Savage, Darnell Savage had, uh, when, when targeted in coverage, 19 of 24, 79.2%, two touchdowns, one interception, a 108.9 rating. Darnell Savage had 13 missed tackles in less in fewer playing time, a 17.3% missed tackle percentage. The difference between Savage and McKinney is, like I said, we're on a totally different stratosphere here in, in all seriousness. Uh, he played, the, here's the other beautiful thing about McKinney. He will be the post safety in Green Bay, zero question about it, but he can play everything. He can play two high safety. He can play cover three, cover four. He can play in the box. He played 388 snaps in the box last year for the Giants, 464 at free safety and 167 snaps in the slot. He can do everything. And one of the things that you really want is versatility there. It's great that you are, have McKinney now to be your primary post safety, but you also want um, the uh, just like the illusion of complexity on offense. Like you want to mess with people. You want to line up McKinney as your, you know, deep safety and then another safety in the box. And then right before the snap, they switch or right post snap, they switch. Now all of a sudden McKinney's in the box and your box safety is, is uh, deep and it just messes with the quarterback's mind. And if they're, especially if they're like play action, like they go back and they look and they get their snapshot of the field and it's like, all right, we got McKinney at, at, at the post. We got the other box safety in the box and then you snap and they switch and the quarterback turns his back, does the fake handoff, looks back and everything's different. That can mess with the quarterback a little bit. So you love that versatility from McKinney and they can use him in a variety of different ways. Um, he's a, again, a perfect deep safety option. He's been a team captain. He played 100% of the snaps in 2023. 
It's everything, man. It is absolutely, absolutely everything. This is a perfect signing for Green Bay. They did pay for it. It is a top five safety contract in the entire NFL. And that is a big time amount of money to put into a what's generally considered a non-premium position. I've talked about this at length when it comes to the safety spot, especially with the deep safety where you're playing them, you know, 25 yards downfield at sometimes. There will be eight, nine, 10 plays in a row sometimes that go by where Xavier McKinney will not even be involved in the play just because that that's how it works when you're the deepest of the deep and you're staying and you're making sure that everything is being able to stay in front of you. However, what I will add to that is that the reason, the reason that you can get away with that, the reason that you can play Jair and Carrington Valentine and Eric Stokes more in a press man situation, the reason that you can keep that extra safety in the box because you want to be able to stop the run at a higher rate and cut off some of the intermediate and short, you know, crossing routes and in patterns and all those sort of things. The reason you can get away with all of those things is because you have somebody like a Xavier McKinney on the back end. This is again, a perfect, beautiful, wonderful fit. And I cannot wait to see how it's going to turn out. They are giving Jeff Halfley a significant piece that he needs for this defense to be successful. And I cannot wait to see it in motion. Super, super excited about it. I'm just making sure I haven't missed uh, any free agency news really quick here. Uh, let's see. All right. I don't think I've missed anything too crazy here. We'll see. If there's anything, I'm going to check the chat at the bottom right now before I get to super chats. Anything I'm missing in free agency? Anything I missed? Oh, Josh Jacobs is a four-year, $48 million deal. Interesting. All right. So it's team-friendly. Uh, let me see. Four years, 48, but team-friendly is an interesting way to put it. Raiders have agreed to a term with Gardner Minshew. So four years, 48 per... Uh, Interesting. Also, Geno Stone, only a two-year, $15 million deal. That's an interesting one as well. Uh, 12, oh, 12 guaranteed only on a four-year 48. All right, we'll see. Well, I'm, I'm excited to see that one on paper. Um, that'll be a very interesting one. And so, Mark, this is a great, this is what we, don't even look at four years 48 right now. 12 mil guaranteed is the biggest piece of that, but we really need to look at the structure of the contract. Four years, 48 is agent talk. That is agent talk a million percent of the way. Um, 12 mil guaranteed. And what you see in the first two years of that deal is what you really want to look at. Um, and yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm not concerned about four years, 48 at this point. I, I just kind of want to see what that actual full structure looks like. Yeah, this would be my guess. And this is what most deals are, right? Um, seemed more of like a two-year opt-out sort of thing. I, I would imagine so as well. Uh, Cody says McKinney making losing Jones things a little less. Remember, you know, I, I don't think this is going to happen, but you know, Silverstein did point out that, Hey, that maybe they could still work something. I, I don't see it happening. I think they've gone in a different direction. I don't think after the release, they're going to reconcile. It just sucks. I, I, I totally get it. But, um, yeah, this is a great point too. Deandre Swift, uh, got eight mil guaranteed. So if Jacobs only got 12, um, not, not bad at all. Uh, overall, when I hear four years, 48, with 12 mil guaranteed, my my radar says that's probably a good deal. But um, again, until we actually see the full structure of it, we're going to have to kind of wait and see. Uh, Jason Spitz. I don't know if that's, if that's the actual former Packer. That'd be like just another amazing thing that has happened today. But Jason Spitz, thank you for becoming a YouTube member. Appreciate that a ton. Uh, if this is the real Jason Spitz, well, obviously you're a real Jason Spitz, but if you're former Packer, Jason Spitz, uh, why don't you come, we, we, you should come on and talk sometime too, and we can do a podcast together. Uh, sure is different from the Ted Thompson era. Yes. Um, and a couple of people pointed out today too, like this is really only the, the third time that, that Goody's had any money to spend the last three years, three years. I think he hasn't, um, you know, he did that first year and went and signed Jimmy Graham, a little bit of a gulp. And then of course the next year, uh, you go and you get, and it, it, what, it was Jimmy Graham, Mercedes Lewis, and I think there was one other player they signed that year too, um, a smaller free agent, if I remember correctly. That's maybe an offensive lineman. I don't remember. Either way, uh, or maybe it was uh, the defensive tackle from the Niners. I can't even remember his name. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, Quentin Dial, no, it wasn't Quentin Dial, was it? Was Quentin Dial a Packer? Now I'm just going down a freaking rabbit hole. Quinn Dial was a Packer. All right. Was it Quentin Dial that they signed that year? This is the weird place my mind goes in. Uh, anyway, then the next year, they, of course, signed the big four, Zedarius Preston, Amos, and Billy Turner. 
And then they have to just do value shopping for the past handful of seasons or past few seasons. And then of course this year, he actually has some money to spend again and Goody was willing to do it. And he said it all the way along. And I, I like McKinney always felt like a legitimate real, like this was a pie in the sky signing. You didn't necessarily expect it to happen. And we easily could have got to any conversation, you know, and, and they're always going to be in it, but it did feel like he was going to go spend. He spent aggressively and two big free agent signings on day one. Um, this is not the Ted Thompson era, not, not, not anything that uh, Ted normally has done, but uh, Goody has shown that ability to do that when he's wanted to. <laughs> How many times did McKinney intercept Caleb Williams this year? Uh, not enough. I mean, meaning like you, there's no number that could be enough, uh, but I'm so excited to see him in the back end of that defense making plays. It's going to be a totally different situation for the Packers defense that we've seen a long time, probably since Collins. I think it's probably Collins the last time we've seen somebody flying around that defensive secondary the way that McKinney can. Uh, obviously, we've had, you know, not that we want to bring up the name anymore and we pretend that he's not a Packer more often than not, but uh, Darren Sharper in his prime, Leroy Butler in his prime, Nick Collins in his prime. Um, yeah, I, I would probably put McKinney a little bit below uh, Butler and obviously Butler Hall of Fame Butler and then below Collins as well. But um, I think he's probably in that, that again, don't even like talking about him, but that Darren Sharper range when he was a Green Bay Packer, some of the playmaking and, um, but Green Bay hasn't had many of these guys and they have one right now, which is really, really fun. William, thanks so much for the super chat. Uh, my heart hurts about Aaron Jones, but business being business, I get it. But can I live in a world where maybe he sniffs around free agency and still ends up back? Uh, also, are you kidding me, McKinney? Like I said, I don't think we're going to end up in a world where Aaron Jones is back. I don't think it's impossible. Um, but you never quite know. Also, you have to remember too, like, you don't remember the Amon Green situation. Not totally similar, but Amon Green is, you know, leaves in, I think it was free agency. I don't think they cut him, but he goes to the Houston Texans. I think plays for the Texans for a couple of years. And then Aaron, uh, Amon Green got sort of a swan song. I uh, had to wear number 34. It was really weird and uh, off-putting and certainly wasn't the same player. But I think that's uh, actually how he broke the, the rushing record for the Packers is he came back. You never know. You know, maybe in a couple of years, the, the Packers are in a situation where um, they're all in and they get some running back injuries and Aaron Jones is on his last legs and they bring Aaron Jones back for one last cup of coffee. You never know. Maybe there's something there, uh, but... As of right now, I would expect this to be the Josh Jacobs show at running back moving forward. Skittish. I think McKinney is exactly what this Packers team needs. His sideline to sideline speed is some of the best in the league. Uh, agreed. Now, you have to remember, though, the interesting thing about McKinney, um, like, like I said, his RAS score and his overall athletic skills, um, not like super high end, right? Uh, this is, I'm trying to remember what his like 40 was and everything. All right. So he had a, he had a 463 40 yard dash coming out of college which is like a 55th percentile for a safety. Um, you know, he wasn't uh, wasn't a super high-end athlete, but what you love about McKinney is his play speed. His play speed is undeniable. And his ability to get, like you said, sideline to sideline, where you really, and he didn't do the agility testing when he came out of the draft, but his hips are so fluid and he can turn on a dime and get to exactly where he needs to go. At safety, it's a lot of times instincts and taking great angles and then that fluidity that we just talked about. That would be great if he was also a 4 4 40 guy. If he was, he'd probably just be a freak and the Giants probably just franchise him and he'd never let him go in the first place or he probably goes in the top 10 of that draft. But uh, either way, he has everything that he needs to be a home run player at that position. He has been, was fantastic a season ago. And like I said, it's going to be a massive signing for Green Bay. Uh, helps hurt from the 33 news. And thank you again for the, the chat, Michael. Uh, given your breakdowns of the safeties that also played slot, would it make any sense to sign two more safeties and have slot taken care of two or prefer a dedicated slot guy? Personally, I'd prefer a dedicated slot guy. I think there's going to be plenty of those players in the draft that they can go and get. So that's probably the way that I, I go. Um, but it does sound like they have some legitimate interest in bringing Keyshawn Nixon back. We'll see if that's their next signing. Um, but yeah, I, I probably wouldn't go in the three safety direct. I still would add more safeties. I still think you probably want two guys between Xavier McKinney and Anthony Johnson Jr. Anthony Johnson Jr. is your four. Benny Sapp and Zane Anderson fighting for number five in that special teams role. A legitimate starter at two and somebody who could you know be a depth piece plus special teams guy at three. And then your developmental guy in Anthony Johnson Jr. Uh, not to mention like easily one of that number two or three could also be a rookie. I think that's a good place to be in, but this is a big time investment at safety. He's going to be the, the starting safety for the foreseeable future. And hopefully this all goes according to plan, because if so, um, this is a big time ad again in the, in the Packers secondary. 
Uh, do we know if this is a front-loaded or back-loaded contract? If it is front-loaded, I like it a lot, especially since he's young. I can promise you it will not be front-loaded. Green Bay doesn't have that type of money to play with. Uh, Chicago has the money to play with, um, but Green Bay does not. Uh, they will not front-load any contracts at this point. These will all be back-loaded. Now, it doesn't have to necessarily be aggressively back-loaded, but they will be back-loaded. And remember, the salary cap is going to continue to go up. Um, and this just makes it, if they front load it, then what they're going to have to do is restructure a bunch of other players. And you don't necessarily want to do that. It's just like basically robbing Peter to pay Paul. So it doesn't really matter, but they'll be backloaded to some extent. Uh, we don't know for sure until we actually see the contract breakdowns, which are not out as of yet, at least as I started this episode. Um, but once we get them, we'll take a, a deep dive into them so we can kind of really analyze them uh, a lot further. Wesley, uh, Jones is released for sure. He is going to be released. Multiple reports have confirmed that. Um, again, it doesn't necessarily mean that green Bay couldn't bring him back after he tests the market, he could go on the market and maybe the team that's willing to pay him the most is willing to pay him one year, 7 million. And green Bay could say, Hey, that's awesome. Well, we're willing to pay you one year, 7.25 million. And he could say, awesome. I'm coming back. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, just my gut feel. Hey, I also tweeted out old takes exposed. And I, I, uh, I self-reported myself today. I tweeted out, put it in. What did I say? carve it in stone, you know, put it in blood, uh, tattoo it on yourself. Aaron Jones will be back in 2024. So with Aaron Jones, I've been wrong before, Wesley. My gut tells me probably not. But again, you have to remember Silverstein reported even before this happened a couple of weeks ago that there could be a scenario in which they can't come to an agreement. They release Jones, let him hit the market, test it out, see what he can get, go back to Green Bay, say, here's what I got. And Green Bay has the opportunity to match it. And if they want to, they will. And if they don't, they don't. There could be a world or a realm or a multiverse in which that exists. My guess is the signing of Josh Jacobs changed the calculus on that. And I gave this example in the last emergency pod that I did, but imagine you were doing amazing at your job. You had a little bit of a you know leave of absence because you had some sickness or injury or illness that uh, you know, but you came back. And then when you came back, you performed your job better than ever. And then after that, the your work came to you and said, Hey, you were amazing, but we actually want you to make less. And then you're like, well, maybe I'll do something, but let's try to work out maybe something that works for both sides because I really love working here. And you're like working on it. While you're working on it, your job goes out and says, actually, we're going to go and actually pay somebody more than you. And they're going to actually be doing your job and they're going to be our primary guy at your job. We're so willing to maybe keep you along, but we're you know going to pay you even less. What are you going to say? And especially when there's 31 other teams that are probably willing to pay handsomely for your services, you're probably going to give two middle fingers to your boss, say, screw you, I'm out of here. And you're going to go sign probably with Dallas, with a boss that you've worked with in the past and figure things out from there. That's my expectation. And I'll just repeat what I said last episode. It sucks. It's raw. It's real. This is Aaron freaking Jones, who has been the dude, the consummate professional, the heartbeat of the soul and soul of the team per the Green Bay Packers and per everyone who's ever watched him be a member of the team. Dontavian Wicks last year has a drop ball in the middle of the season. Aaron Jones goes out in the middle of the field, lifts his chin up and brings him back to the sideline and gets him back hyped up. Who knows what Dontavian Wicks, you know, is like the rest of the year if he doesn't have that leadership in the locker room and, and Aaron Jones saying, screw it, you're going to be fine and gets him back hyped up. That stuff matters. How Green Bay responds to losing a guy like Aaron Jones in the locker room will matter. Now, I'm sure, again, there's going to be people in that locker room excited to see Josh Jacobs and Xavier McKinney and all these new draft picks that Green Bay will get in this upcoming draft. But losing Aaron Jones is a fabric of that culture, a fabric of the team that surprised everyone last year and made it and almost made it to the, the conference championship and should have made it to the conference championship. And Aaron Jones, at the end of that season, make no mistake about it. Without Aaron Jones performing the way that he did at the final end of that season, they're not even in that position in the first place. So it is, it's raw, it's real, it's emotional, it sucks. You would, you want that guy to, I don't want to see Aaron Jones in any other jersey, period. I don't want to see him in a Browns jersey, a Cowboys jersey, a Texans jersey. I don't want to see any of it. By the way, now that I said the I'm on green thing, there already were some reports that the Texans are interested in Aaron Jones. That would be a very interesting I'm on green um, parallel there. Uh, wait, it's just crazy parallels with the Packers as of late, but, uh, definitely, uh, definitely a, a tough time for the, the, you know, Aaron Jones, you know, situation. And, um, it's, it's raw, even for me guys, I struggle in the first episode. I'll, I'll look you in the eye and tell you, I'll struggle right now. I don't even know what to say other, you know, with, with Jones, just other than that, he's been 
one of the most amazing fun Packers that I've ever had the opportunity to watch. Um, one of my all time favorite green Bay Packers. And it, it sucks to see him go. And I hope you, I, I don't have to hope he'll land on his feet. Cause I know he'll land on his feet. Hope he ends up in a good position and uh, that he goes in, and tears it up in, in 2024. Hopefully, please not Minnesota. Please not Chicago. Please. It's not gonna be Chicago. They're full with running backs, but Minnesota has a lot of running back need. Please no Minnesota, Aaron Jones. That's all I ask. Anyone else we may look to sign defensive line. Uh, appreciate the chat, Bethany. Um, I, my guess is an off ball linebacker could still be uh, somebody that they're targeting. Um, I think Keyshawn Nixon, it sounds like they want back in some capacity. They could still use depth on the offensive line. I, I think they've probably exhausted their big free agent options. And as I'm saying this, who knows, they probably signed somebody else, but uh, I don't think we're going to see uh, any other crazy uh, Packers signings, but it would be uh, a real legitimate option that they sign a couple more like value free agent signings. Something happened with uh, Justin Fields? I don't know. I don't think so. All right. Jack. Jones defined what it meant to be a Packer. Sucks to see him go like this, but he can choose his team now. Excited to watch Jacobs run for us and not worry about him killing our defense. Uh, I talked about this in the last episode as well. Um, uh, what do we got here? Anything big? Oh, okay. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Other than I think somebody pointed this out in the chat, the last two big uh, Packers running back contracts in 2021, Aaron Jones signed a, a 26 year old Aaron Jones signed a four year, $48 million deal. 2024, Josh Jacobs signed a uh, four year, $48 million deal. So very similar there. Uh, but what was I going on about? Um, I don't know. So I lost my train of thought, but yeah, obviously, um, you know, tough to see Jones go. We'll see where he ultimately ends up. And, uh, like I said, I'm trying to keep up with everything that's happening in real time. So I'm sorry. I'm a little bit scattered and all over the place here, but, um, Oh, I was, I know what I was saying about, uh, Josh Jacobs is that what you're really hoping for here is the 2022 version of Josh Jacobs, who was an absolute monster. And that version of Josh Jacobs you get him and you're better than what you had with Aaron Jones really in his career. I mean, I, that's not a disrespect to Aaron Jones. I just said he's one of my all-time favorite Packers. 2022, Josh Jacobs was just on a different level. Like that is a first team all pro caliber running back. If you get that, where's the weakness on offense? And they need to continue to get depth on that offensive line. They need to continue to make sure that they have guys that can block for Jordan Love and, and Jacobs. Otherwise, it's all for not all the playmak all the playmakers and Jordan Love and Jacobs won't matter if they can't block up front. They've got five guys right now. I feel pretty decent about, but really no depth behind it. We now know that for sure. Bakhtiari gone. We, that's how crazy today is. We have we we're thirty two minutes and forty seven seconds into a chat about the a live emergency chat about the Packers. I don't even think I've mentioned David Bakhtiari being released yet. Like that's the type of day this has been. But Bakhtiari's gone. John Runyon Jr. is officially gone. Um, Yash Nyman, I do not expect to be back, although you never quite know. Uh, right now, it's like Luke Tenuta, Caleb Jones. I would expect that they're going to release Royce Newman at some point. They're, they don't have the depth there. But other than that, you look at the playmaking on this offense, and it has the ability to be really, really special. But yes, again, very, very tough day uh, for, for the Packers uh, fans with, with Jones leaving in that regard. And now Luvu or Baker at linebacker. That would be fun. I'm a huge Luvu guy. I, my guess is he gets probably a bigger deal than Green Bay can afford this at this point after uh, two big, pretty big free agent signings. I think they probably have to go a little bit more value shopping, but who knows? Goody's on one right now, so nothing would surprise me. Would you say Jacobs is essentially a younger version of Jones? Also, will we sign anyone else or keep the remaining cap for Jordan Love? Yeah, we kind of talked about this. I would expect them to go a little bit more value shopping at this point, off ball linebacker depth on the offensive line. Um, maybe like a slot corner or bringing back a Keyshawn Nixon. Those would be the things that I think you're probably looking at more. Uh, I don't think they're going to do any more like big time signing, but like I said, Goody's on one right now. I don't necessarily see Jacobs as a younger version of Jones. They're two totally different styles of runner. Um, Jones is just so elusive and found those really tiny creases where Jacobs has the, a little, a little bit more ability to kind of run through you, be a little bit more physical. It is a bummer because I do think Jones and Jacobs would have been a perfect one, two punch. And now you don't have that. You have Jacobs, Emmanuel Wilson, and I'm sure green Bay is going to address that probably number two spot in the draft, but I, I don't necessarily say that. I, I think they're a, a, a younger version or, or all that similar overall, but both dynamic in their own way. Um, I have a friend who's a Giants fan. He's not doing well right now. Um, 
Also, 40 time is so overrated. I saw a stat recently about how the fastest wide receiver in the draft are bust over like the last 10 seasons. Yeah. Listen, like I said, McKinney plays fast, takes good angles, uh, super fluid, um, really smart, intelligent, great football intelligence, great instincts. Those are all the things that you want at that position. I hope, I hope, uh, skittish that your Giants fan is not doing well simply because of the McKinney signing and not that he, like, there's something seriously wrong with him. Um, I hope he's okay. I think you just mean that he's not doing well because probably they lost Barkley and McKinney. Um, hey, they got John Runyon Jr. though. So there is that. So maybe he can uh, hopefully be better with that. No, I would be shocked why if Patrick Queen is still an option. Again, I, I had one old takes exposed already today. So maybe this will be number two, but I'd be pretty shocked if Patrick Queen is any real legitimate, legitimate option, nor do I think he should be, honestly. I think Queen is too sporadic and um, inconsistent. And I think pairing that with, uh, with Quay Walker is probably not ideal, but, um, yeah, I, I think it's probably, like I said, a little bit more value free agent signing at this point. Do I know anything about Jacob's leadership qualities besides Jones play? That's the one thing that will definitely be missed. I don't, I don't know if he's ever been like a team captain or anything like that. I haven't had the opportunity to look into that, but, uh, I, the second part of your statement, Adam is a million percent correct. That is a huge loss for the locker room. And that matters. That absolutely matters. You need guys like that. And I think Rebay has other players like that in the locker room. And, um, you know, they're going to have to continue to grow as a young group that like you're, you're going to develop new leaders within that locker room. And that's okay too. But Jones is one of the best ever in that locker room for green Bay period. He was one of the best dudes in the history of the Packers locker room. And that will be missed regardless. Like we're not even talking about his stellar play on the field. Off the field, he's an A plus, a hundred point zero PFF grade based on locker room intangibles. Um, that's my own made up thing, but uh, you get the point. That will definitely be something that's missed with uh, with Aaron Jones in Green Bay. I think we're I think we're caught up uh, with super chats. Wagner is actually a really interesting one, Jeff. Um, you're at the point now a little bit where you're building a strong enough team where, like, if you're doing like one year like, you know, five mil, six mil, seven mil type deal for a Bobby Wagner. I don't hate that at this point. I think you would tag really well with Quay Walker. I think Quay Walker would gain a lot by playing with um, Bobby Wagner. I, I don't mind that at all. Um, that would be an interesting one. Do we, do we have a Jones to the to the Chiefs fake news here? Uh, the the queen to the Seahawks uh, parent was, was fake. Um, let's see here. This is actually a good reminder, by the way. Will Lutz earlier today, um, he's a kicker. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but he had a contract. I forget who it was with. Uh, but he had a contract set with somebody else. And now he just decided, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna, he stays with the Broncos. So just a reminder that with all this stuff, with the Jacobs and the McKinney signings, they... It, it's not final until it's final. They have to actually sign the contract. I don't expect anything that's going to happen there. Um, but just a reminder that it's not final until they can actually sign them on Wednesday. Totally healthy, just about losing Barkley and, and Xavier McKinney. Good. Glad to hear that. Jones Chiefs is fake. Good. McKinney signing was awesome. Yes. Yeah, nothing official on Queen. Lots of was with Jacksonville. All right. So yeah, that was the big one. Yeah, and he just re-signed with Denver. All right, what else am I missing, guys? Anything else happen? Um, obviously, a ton to talk about. Happy for John Runyon Jr. that he gets a, a big contract in New York. Um, this is why I was talking about in the offseason, guys, of like looking at the comp pick stuff. Don't even worry about it. McKinney and is, is going to offset the comp picks. Um, and, and clearly, Josh Jacobs is too. They signed two big-time unrestricted free agents. So even though Savage and, um, and uh, John Runyon Jr. had contracts that would have... Jeez. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard that, but there's a huge car, uh, really loud, but anyway, uh, yeah, even though they had huge contracts, um, yeah, or at least compensatory pick contracts, McKinney and, and Jacobs are just going to cancel that out. I, they, I guess theoretically it's possible. Um, if, if like, uh, Keyshawn Nixon goes and signs a big contract somewhere, um, and they don't sign any more unrestricted free agents that green Bay could still end up with like a comp pick, but it's not going to be much, if anything, anymore. Ah, Kevin, I think you were. Good call. And yes, I answered McKinney and we got McKinney. So we're all good. Did Jacobs and McKinney play together in Bama? That's an easy Google, Google search, right? Josh Jacobs at Bama was there from 2016 to 2018. 
Xavier McKinney at Bama was there 2017. Yeah, so 2017 and 2018, they were together at Bama. Good call. Two Bama signings. Didn't even put that together yet. So uh, Blake, again, we'll have to wait and see how the, the contract is structured. How he'll, When it says that he's getting $25 million in year one, usually the vast majority of that is the signing bonus. So when it's a four-year deal, let's say he's getting, I, I don't know, did we see the guarantee yet on that? Um, but it was, it's probably like a 20 something million guarantee, um, that will prorate over the four years of the contract. Um, and you only go 5 million salary cap hit, and then it's going to backload the base salaries from year one, where it's going to be something super cheap in year one, then bigger in year two, then bigger in year three and massive in year four. So the proration will be the, the signing bonus. Remember the signing bonus, Xavier McKinney in cash up front gets all that cash right away. That is paid to him immediately. Just like if you were to sign a signing bonus, some company was like, hey, if you sign and come in and play with us, you're going to get a $100 sign-on bonus. You get that right away. It's the same thing in the NFL. You get that cash straight up, but it prorates on the cap. So McKinney will get a ton in cash in year one. and But the signing bonus will be even every single year. That's a salary cap rule. You can't change up how the signing bonus prorates. It has to be even year over year. And then the base salaries will go up exponentially and be backloaded as the contract goes on. So he'll get a ton in year one, but it will not be a, a, a front-loaded contract. But like I said, I will wait to see until I actually see it to comment a million percent on it. Uh, maybe, again, it just depends on what other free agent signings they get. <clears throat> oh, this is interesting. Uh, can someone explain Jacobs and McKinney's signings in NBA terms? That's really tough. Um, so Jacobs is probably like, I'm trying to think of like, it's, it's not quite like a Russell Westbrook because um, he didn't like completely fall out of favor entirely and like switch a bunch of teams. But uh, he's kind of like a player who was really good throughout the course of his career and then had one bad year. And then, you know, teams were questioning of like, all right, does he still have it? And then somebody takes a, you know, signs him to a big deal still because of his previous performance. I don't know that I have a perfect example for somebody who that is. Um, McKinney's more of like a, a big time free agent center uh, who maybe isn't like the most like dynamic. Uh, I mean, I, obviously McKinney's dynamic, but I mean like, you know, he's only going to do like the, the, I don't even know how to explain this, but like it's a non-premium position if, unless you're like Joel Embiid, right? That's how I kind of a more specifically saying it, but it's a big time center and it's still like a big time free agent signing. I'd probably put it that way. Um, but still either way, regardless if it's an NFL or NBA to, uh, Harden, maybe, um, that's not a, a bad one. Jacobs is Bradley Beal. That would be probably pretty good. I like that. That's fine. I don't know if I'd go Shangu and Shangu's a little bit too much, but, uh, I mean, even like, yeah, I don't know. Either way. That's the big thing. It's like, it's so hard to compare. Also, you've got, you know, 22 starters in the NFL and you've got, you know, five in the NBA. So it's, it's really hard to like apples to apples that, uh, Let's see, Omar. Good to see you, buddy. McKinney's worth at least twenty-four. Uh, at, worth it at twenty-four. I think I paid a little bit more than a fifteen a season, but seventeen he plays like he did, um, like he has. We did well. No, I agree. I think that the age here really comes into uh, consideration. Yeah, McKinney is Gobert. I like as well. But yeah, the, the age absolutely plays a part here. And you're willing to pay more money. Go if you're going to sign free agents, sign the ones that are young and give them huge deals because those are usually going to age a lot better than some of the older contracts where they usually do not age very well at all. Uh, what do I think of Gardner Minshew in Vegas? I don't know. I don't really, doesn't really move the needle for me one way or the other. Nelson, great question. Am I happy with the signings? This is a really interesting day, a massively interesting day. Um, on Let's, let's go on the exiting Packers first. David Bakhtiari was a necessary evil. The whole situation sucks. Nobody wants to see this end up the way that it did. Not the Packers, not Bakhtiari, not the fans, not anyone. In a perfect world, he never injures himself in 2020. Maybe the Packers have another Super Bowl to show for it. Maybe he ends up a Hall of Famer and he goes down as one of the all-time, all-time greats at the position. Instead, he gets hurt. He's never the same. The Packers don't end up with a Super Bowl. He's nowhere near the Hall of Fame conversation due to the injuries and the Packers have to end up releasing one of their all-time great players. And it just sucks. But it was expected. It was a necessary evil. And it was the right move to make at this point in time. 
That's number one. Number two, Darnell Savage leaving for Jacksonville. On its harshest terms, I am so excited that, in, and again, I don't mean to be a dick about it, just transparently, but I'm very excited for the Darnell Savage era to be over in Green Bay. Consistently inconsistent. I talk about all the times, like my favorite players to watch, David Bakhtiari, Devontae Adams, Mercedes Lewis, uh, De, um, you know, Aaron Jones, obviously, just masters at their craft. Like just, you know, the best of the best, Mercedes Lewis is a blocking tight end, like just watching them play after play after play and do something that is so incredibly special. And for me, it was like almost the opposite with, with Darnell Savage, where it was like the opposite of like, I, I, you would just be so infuriating because there'd be poor angles and there'd be bad tackling. And there was a lack of play. It was just like, I was so ready for that to go in a different direction. So that part I'm excited about Runyon. Uh, there was, all, I had a small amount of hope that maybe they could work something out, but the deal that he got was amazing. Uh, I think it's probably a little bit of an overpay for New York, but I'm excited that he had the value in free agency that he got a starting deal, a 10 mil plus per, per season deal. Green Bay never should have been in the conversation for that type of contract. They weren't. It was right for Green Bay to let him walk at that number. And I'm excited that Runyon got that number. So I think that was the right move overall. Um, I'm excited that Tyler Davis is back, probably on a vet minimum deal, very minimal signing there. Aaron Jones leaving is a kick in the nuts. It just is like, there's, there's no other way around it. I don't, I don't, I don't know how anyone could be excited about Aaron Jones leaving. And I don't know that anyone could have expected it. I don't know that anyone saw it coming. And of all the things that we're talking about today, the last thing that I was expecting in any capacity was, um, was Jones leaving today. And like of all the things that we could have possibly been talking about, and we're talking about a ton of things today. That was not one of them that I was expecting so that, like I said, was just a, a kick in the nuts. I'm not saying it's like that it can't end up where Jacobs just ends up being better this year than Aaron Jones. There's a lot of different scenarios in which that ends up being the real case. Um, this can pay off for Green Bay in a major way still. I, I, I think there's reasons to be anxious and nervous about it. I think, again, it, it, no matter how you feel about Jacobs as a running back, even if you think Jacobs is better, even if you think Jacobs is going to be a significant upgrade from Aaron Jones, Losing Aaron Jones is still a punch to the gut. There's no two ways around it. And that locker room thing we talked about is legitimate. And that that's a that's a tough pill to swallow. Period. End of story. Um, so yeah, that 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 is tough to come to terms with uh, on it uh, just on its own. As far as Josh Jacobs goes, this was not somebody that I was super excited about going into free agency. Not necessarily the deal that I would have probably gone after. Um, and, and, uh, like the easy way is to like, you know, if my, my epic, go listen to my running back episode prior to the free agency. I said like, this is like, this would be almost like a, I don't even know if I said it. Somebody said that I said it, but I don't remember it. But like one of like the worst case scenarios, if they give Josh Jacobs a huge contract, I'll, I'll go over it for those of you who may have missed it earlier. Um, this was his numbers. There were 35 eligible running backs last year for pro football focuses, like analytics scale here, 35 eligible running backs. J Jacobs had a 32.2 elusive rating, which was the worst of the 35 running backs. He had nine runs of 10 plus yards, which was 32nd out of 35 running backs. He had 28 missed tackles forced, which was 32nd out of 35 running backs. And he had 2.3, uh, point, sorry, 2.35 yards after contact per attempt which was 35th out of the 35 running backs. He had a total of 233 carries, 805 yards, 3.5 yards per carry. Th these, these numbers for Jacobs were much, much closer and probably a little bit worse than AJ Dillon numbers than they were even remotely close to Aaron Jones numbers last year. That should give you some cause for concern and some hesitation and some nervousness and anxiousness. Now, as I've talked about all you know, all of these episodes on this, and we talked about it here too. That Raiders offense was in a brutal state. The coach is bad, the quarterback's bad, the offensive line is bad, and everyone's teeing up to stop Josh Jacobs. That's not a great situation to be in for Josh Jacobs and his value as a running back. Um, but that gives me a lot of concern. And he showed, I thought, some signs of decline. If you get 2022 Josh Jacobs, this deal is awesome. If you get 2023 Josh Jacobs, this deal sucks. There's a fine line there, but you're clearly hoping that Goody saw something. Um, and I'm really, really excited to dig deep into the tape on Josh Jacobs to just see 
hopefully what I think that Green Bay has seen and what Goody saw, that he wanted to bring him in and make him the number one running back. But that I have I have anxiousness and nervousness about. Don't necessarily think it's bad. When it was initially like, I thought, all right, Jacobs and Jones, I can at least see the vision there. Jacobs with no Jones, that's a different story. Uh, but they're not necessarily done at running back either. And we'll see what they do to sort of put a tag team partner with, with Jacobs. And there's a lot of ways that this could still go very well. Um, but not necessarily what I was expecting. And that's, uh, again, something that we had to uh, um, just kind of have to work through still. And then, of course, you've got Xavier McKinney, which is, to me, a home run signing. I don't know how you could not be thrilled with that signing. And to me, that is a very, very awesome contract or like an awesome move. I'm not concerned about the contract. Love the player. Still young. Perfect fit. Totally cool with that. So again, you talk about the wide range of emotions of players leaving, players staying, players coming, players going. It's all over the place. I would say overall, man, um, I don't know. I would say probably like a B, B minus day for me so far, which is tough because they made a lot of really smart moves and the McKinney one is is up there. The the Jacobs one is is concerning. And then again, the, the Jones one is, is we're going to have to sort of wait and see how that all works out. Um, but I can see the vision and I, I think that's probably the best. The last thing I'll say on this overall is what I want to know. Um, <laughs> Josh Jacobs just chatted in. Good to see you, Josh. Uh, where did you go? There you go. I had the name before him. If anyone was wondering, uh, amazing. But, um, if, if, if what I always want to see when you see moves like this are a vision in place, they went younger they went higher upside and they went for greatness. And I can respect that. I can, regardless of what happens, I can see the vision for it. The Bears, for example, signing Kevin Byard and um, DeAndre Swift as their two primary signings on day one when you have 100 million free agency and you're not ready to compete in 2024, uh, 2024 that, there's no vision there. That, that gives me a lot of you know excitement for the Bears still sucking for the foreseeable future. There's no vision that I see with Chicago right now. I can see the vision in Green Bay. I appreciate the vision. I respect the vision. Um, so with that, I'm willing to give every benefit of the doubt. And obviously the McKinney one is an awesome signing, but the running back thing is just, we're going to have to kind of wait and see. And if you're like, the, I guess I have one more thing to say. If you're going to do a big time, um, you know, free agent signing like a Josh Jacobs on day one of free agency, you want that signing to feel great. Like McKinney feels like the way you feel about Xavier McKinney right now, if you're going to make two big free agent signings, think back to when the Packers signed Preston Smith, Zadarius Smith and Adrian Amos. We were excited about all of them. Billy Turner one was a little bit more interesting, but we were excited about all three of those signings. We were super excited. We are super excited about the Xavier McKinney signing. The Jacobs one is a little bit more because you have to pair it and it's hard to separate church and state here between, you know, just signing Jacobs and also knowing that they had to get rid of Aaron Jones. That's a tougher thing to kind of go over. And if you are going to sign a pretty big free agent, you want to just to feel a little bit better. And this one feels a little bit iffy because of what Jacobs put on film a season ago and because of losing Aaron Jones because of it as well. All right. Got some more super chats that came in. Uh, Frosty Blue Moon. Uh, thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member. Appreciate that. Is Cameron Curl still on our radar with Goody liking to double up or uh, elsewhere in free agency now? I think Curl probably gets paid a little bit more. Um, I don't think he's probably doing it. Um, here, Goody says, uh, releasing Aaron Jones is one of the hardest decisions he's ever had to make as a GM. And it sounds like Aaron Jones said goodbye to Green Bay. So this feels like it's it's gone. It's done. Um, show uh, Aaron Jones posts on Instagram. Thank you for everything, Green Bay. Um, let's see. Full statements uh, from Brian Gutekunst and Matt LaFleur. We want to thank Aaron for his unwavering commitment to the Packers and the community over the past seven seasons. It is certainly one of the hardest decisions we had to make in my time with the Packers and not one taken lightly. He has not only had a significant impact on the field and in the locker room, but he is one of the most beloved players in the community. We wish him nothing but the best for Aaron and his entire family moving forward. Today is a tough day for the Packers and our community, 
as good of a player as Aaron is on the field. He's an even better person, said LaFleur. When I arrived in Green Bay as a first-time head coach, he was instrumental in establishing our winning culture and always served as the greatest example of what it is meant to be a, a Packer. Aaron will always be one of the best players I had on the op- I had the opportunity to coach. He, his son, Junior, his mom, Burgess, and his family will be missed. So this very much seems like a ultimate goodbye to Aaron Jones. So yeah, tough on that. But uh, going back to your question, Terry, sort of interrupt there. Um, I don't believe they're going to probably go with somebody like a Cameron Curl because I just think he probably still gets top end money somewhere. But a Jordan Fuller still wouldn't shock me. Um, we'll see what Julian Blackman gets. But if there is like a, a Blackman, a Fuller, or a um, Curl that ends up going for less, I wouldn't totally rule it outside of the realm of possibility. But I think they get with, with what they're going to pay McKinney, I think they can probably get away cheaper, younger, going maybe with a draft pick at that specific position. <laughs> what an off season, huh? Oh, wait, it's only March. The free agency hasn't even officially started. We're just legally tampering still. It literally started five hours and 25 minutes ago. Five hours and 25 minutes. I am, this is insane. I didn't even realize that. We're at five hours and 25 minutes and this has all happened. Just an insane, insane day. What box safety safety archetype do you think Halfley wants? Traditional strong safety like Cam Chancellor or hybrid nickel like Gardner Johnson? I don't think hydra, hybrid nickel like Gardner Johnson, but I think somebody that's going to be a little bit more physical against the run. Um, I, I think so, uh, if you go look at like a Julian Blackman, I think he'd be such a perfect fit for that role. I think that's somebody that has some versatility, but also fits the box uh, safety position like to a T. Um, and also you could, again, switch up uh, a variety of those different players. Um, See, I'm trying to think of other plays. Kyle Duggar, I think, would have been a great pick. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Um, yeah, I think I think those are probably like they could go like a Jeremy Chin on like a reclamation project. Still, um, I think you still probably attack the draft as if you need a starter in that situation. But that would be an interesting one. But I think uh, you know Julian Blackman to me like kind of screams like a perfect. Actually, Jordan Fuller still would be a, a perfect uh, player in that role as well. I'm just trying to get caught up. Will Disley plans to sign with the Chargers. Um, looks like Aaron Jones is not a June 1st release. Oh, yeah, they okay, so they officially released him. Um, so, yeah, it's not a June 1st release for Aaron Jones. Just trying to stay on top of everything here, guys, as best as I can, so stick with me. Uh, yeah, that's going to be hard for a lot of people with uh, with Jones leaving. By the way, Kenny Clark, the only remaining Packer from the Ted Thompson era as well. I tweeted out earlier today, Jones and, and Clark were the only ones remaining. But um, now it is just Jones. Chidobe Awuzi to the Titans. Yeah, man, what a freaking day. All right, let's get back to some questions here. Any, all right, what do we got? Uh Looks like the Giants will be trading for Brian Burns per multiple reports on Twitter. That's an interesting move for them. It's another one of those where you're like, you're not ready to compete in New York, so kind of what are you doing? But listen, GMs have to ch- save their jobs sometimes, and they're probably in a spot in New York right now that they got to figure something out to save their jobs. No T. Higgins, it's a boy. That's a, a waste of resources, my friend. You have You have a cheat code right now. You've got one of the best young wide receiver cores in the NFL at under $10 million total for all of them combined. Why add a huge contract to that where you're going to slow down the progression of some of those other wide receivers, maybe force Jordan Love to have to look his way more because you're making him a huge contract and you're giving up draft capital like a first or second round pick for his services as well, all the way out on any sort of T. Higgins conversation. The good news is, is that if anyone is worried about it, you can absolutely not worry about it because there is 0.0% chance of Goody going in that direction. Yeah, that, that totally cool with it, Mark. He's definitely young enough, talented enough. Um, not a huge deal there, but I still think you. I get, and at some point, you have to put your, um, you know, you have to start putting building blocks together if you want to be a good team eventually. All right, Luvu to the Commanders is that real? Yep, three year, thirty six mil for Luvu. So if anyone was hoping Luvu in Green Bay, that is not going to happen. Uh, that's a good question, Luke. All right, let's talk about this. Did the Packers spend too much on Xavier McKinney? My answer is no. My my usual, and I, I talked about this, and um, again, we, we talked about this a little bit earlier today. 
But my overarching philosophy on free agency is I would rather spend a lot on a great player who's at the right age in the right position for the right team, all of it. And that's what Xavier McKinney is. Then sign a bunch of, you know, cause you could, you can pretty easily before you know it, sign three players to $6 million a year deals. And they're nowhere near having the impact combined that Xavier McKinney would have. Um, also like, this Jones, this uh, I just read Jones. Sorry, Justin Jones to the Cards. Um, hardly knew you. Yeah, keep talking smack over uh, in Arizona too, Justin Jones. But um, you know the difference between a good player and like a up and coming slash average player isn't always that much. The difference between a great player and the next one. That's why I talked about when I went and watched Justin Simmons tape. Good safety, no question about it. Right, he's still really good. He was a second team All Pro a season ago. I'm watching Justin Simmons play single high, and I'm like. This is significantly worse than what I watched when I was watching Xavier McKinney. Like Xavier McKinney was just that much better at it. And you're somebody's going to give, you know, Justin Simmons a big contract. And if the difference is like five, six million more, seven million more, and you go and get the best guy at it, give me the best guy. I want that guy. So I, I don't think to me it's an overpay at all. Um, and I'm I'm very happy with the deal. Now, you do put a lot more eggs in one basket, meaning if he gets hurt, all right, well, that's a lot of money down the drain on one player. Um, so you do, you do risk a little bit more there, but I think those are some of the necessary risks that you have to take from time to time. From a historical perspective, who does McKinney's skill set remind you of? What is this floor versus ceiling in your opinion? Um, I don't know if I have a perfect match for McKinney from like a stylistic standpoint. I'm trying to think. Need some, uh, need some inspiration here. I do think there is a little Darren Sharper to his game, to be totally honest. Um, I would kind of put him as like a B Ed Reed, you know, like if Ed Reed is like the perfect version of Ed Reed, like, I think he's kind of like a B version of Ed Reed, maybe even like a B minus. Cause Ed Reed is just that good. But like, this is a player that is going to play that center field position that can also play in the box. That is a sound tackler that barely misses tackles that has extremely fluid hips that can turn and go in any direction on a dime who can get to either sideline from the center of the field, who has great instincts, who knows how to read quarterbacks, who is still only 24 years old, who is going to patrol that secondary and make it so that quarterbacks are going to fear to throw deep down the field. Cause they know Xavier McKinney is going to get there. Um, he's exactly what you want. Like I said, he is the prototype of a player. Um, yeah, like I said, Darren Sharper, definitely a little bit of that as well from a Packers standpoint. I don't think Earl Thomas, I, to me, those are different players. Uh, Thomas, faster, shorter, a little bit harder of a hitter. Um, I think those are different players. I think he's more of that taller center field type, but he's everything you want. He's absolutely everything that you want. My phone's going crazy. Did I miss anything? Bill's bringing back AJ Epinesa. If Jimmy D10 is listening, that'll be of note to him inside baseball there a little bit. Uh, again, more just the Aaron Jones cut. All right. Uh, I don't think Woodson, although like the, the later version of Woodson at safety is like Charles Woodson, um, is not like a super, um, there's a little bit of that. I can see that. I'm cool with that. Uh, as far as like a ceiling and floor, a ceiling is in my opinion, as good as any center field safety in football. The floor is that he probably just gets banged up or doesn't quite play up to expectations. But, um, this has been somebody that's been a highly thought of safety ever since college, Alabama, second round pick played well in New York. I don't think there's much risk here that all of a sudden he just doesn't hit. Um, a floor would be like he plays well, but just doesn't have the impact. And is probably like an Adrian Amos. Yeah. Not too dissimilar from Derwin. I think Derwin is, Derwin was a freak. And then like when he was not injured and he's just playing awesome, I think Derwin has better man-to-man -man coverage ability than what McKinney has. Um, and, and you can play Derwin, like Derwin in the box is a beast. Like in Derwin can play the slot and he's good. I think Derwin gives you more flexibility, but as a pure single high safety, I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, Derwin in, in McKinney's game as well. Jesse Bates is a bigger playmaker, uh, playmaker to me and not quite as uh, a physical presence. And not that McKinney's like a huge physical presence, but um, there's a little bit of a difference there. And like I said, Bates just comes up with massive amounts of plays, but different, but not all that dissimilar. Uh, are we out from under the Aaron Jones contract after this year now since his release was not June 1st? Uh, yes, everything will go against this year's salary cap. Yep. So there will not have any Aaron Jones cap hit in 2025. 
I don't think uh, Hasbaum, I don't think there was any real legitimate thought of going safety by, you know, rookie committee or anything like that. Um, I guess I safety by committee. Like, but I think they could have gone like a Jordan Fuller and a Cameron curl or like a Jordan Fuller and um, like a Julian Blackman or something like that. So if that's safety by committee, sure. But I don't think there was any thought of doing another savage Jonathan Owens to various more Rudy Ford off season or anything like that. I don't think that was ever in the, the thought process. Yeah, I, Prime Harrison Smith is probably a little bit better in my opinion. I just have a, such a high thought of Harrison Smith. I think Harrison Smith also is like he was a dynamic box safety too. There, but there's definitely some of that there as well. But McKinney's just kind of his own dude too, and he just I, I, regardless of who we want to compare him to, just know he's a really great center sa- center field safety, and he's going to fit perfectly in that defense. Terry, my friend, thank you so much for becoming a member. I'll do a cheap plug now. If you have not yet checked out pack a day podcast, YouTube memberships do so, uh, weekly live Q and A's, uh, for members only extra episodes, first access to episodes, all of it. So a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of really fun stuff there. Uh, let's wait till we see the actual contract pen digging guarantees are going to play a huge year, a huge role here. Yes, I do agree that we do still have a huge need for a linebacker. I think this is, again, is probably draft and maybe going in a little bit of a, a bargain direct, uh, direction there too. So yeah, we saw Luvu to, to Washington. I think, at, listen, after they got McKinney, any like major thoughts of signing any additional big time free agents was kind of out the window for me. Uh, oh, Pelissero released the numbers? For which one? I know he released the numbers, right? Four years, 48 or whatever for Jacobs. And we'll see the numbers from, I know is what, four years, 64 or 68 for McKinney. Yeah, four years, 68 for McKinney. But the numbers are not anything. Those are agent numbers. Um, Unless it's like the full contract for, uh, for Jacobs. Yeah, I don't think we got it yet. I'll check really quick on Pelissero's. If so, if somebody actually just wants to post the uh, the year by year numbers, then I'm happy to to analyze it. But I don't think we actually have the breakdown year by year for any of them yet. But if I am wrong. Link me to the tweet and I will break it down all for you. Yeah. Tw- again, I know the numbers. Yep. So Josh Jacobs, it's 12.5 signing bonus, f- uh, 14.8 mil total in year one. Um, so yeah, that that's all cool. Um, but I want to see the year by year and actually like how that contract is going to hit and everything like that. And then we can break it down and see what it's, it's cause it's probably actually like a two year deal. Um, yeah, that we'll see. We will absolutely see. Um, so yeah, no, no actual contract structure as of yet. Uh, we never signed big inside linebacker names, even Campbell. Didn't really usually sign big safety names either. Didn't really usually sign big running back names either. And sometimes things change, right? Um, they go out and they sign Josh Jacobs and David McKinney today. So nothing's necessarily off the table for Goody. Draft bigs. Yeah, I, I think you can expect a lot of offensive line in the draft. I think you can expect a lot of offensive line in the draft. We'll see if they get back Keyshawn Nixon at corner. Otherwise, corner is going to be something. And I would expect them to attack linebacker too. Um, they got top, you know, five top 100 picks. I would not be shocked if the, a lot of that was what safety linebacker, corner, offensive line, running back. You know, they, they can still attack things pretty aggressively. Yeah, I don't see Patrick Queen. We talked about this a little bit, Nick. Don't see him being an option. One, think he'll be too much. Two, don't think it's the right direction to go. I think him and Quay together is a little bit too inconsistent. Sorry, I'm bumping my mic here. Um, but I, I just think you have too much um, inconsistency at that position. Probably not the direction I would go in. Uh, we need a safety or inside linebacker. Uh, you still need safety. You still need off-ball linebacker. You still need slot corner. You still need offensive line depth. Still need a running back. So, but I think depth at offensive line and competition at offensive line is still of the utmost importance to me. Uh, it's all contract related, Eric. Um, one, they decided to go with Josh Jacobs. Two, they decided that they and um, 
you know, that, that Jones and, and, and the Packers couldn't get on the same page from a contract standpoint. Uh, here's the thing, right? We are all going to, and I, I said this in the last chat, the last emergency pod, but we all have an attachment to, to Aaron Jones. It's not that Matt LaFleur and Brian Gudikins don't, but these, these are job description decisions for Brian Gudikins. He has to make these in a vacuum and not be attached to a player because of how amazing they were. Um, the NBA gets this wrong all the time. Speaking of the NBA before the NBA, a lot of times plays pays players for who they were. And what your job is as a GM is to play pay, pay players for who they're going to be. More often than not, the very smart money is not to put any money down on running backs who are going to be 30 or above 30. It just has not worked out well, especially in the last decade or so. And teams want to get younger at that position. I think ideally Green Bay probably would have loved to have gone even younger and got a, a big time playmaker in the draft at that position but it's a really bad draft um, for running backs. At least it's not a good draft uh, for, for running backs. So they decided to go younger. They're betting on younger. They're betting on upside and they're betting on not Aaron Jones versus Josh Jacobs in 2023, but they're betting on who will be the better running back from 2024 to 2020 in, in 2025. Ultimately is probably what you're looking at. And they ultimately determined that Josh Jacobs in 2024 and 2025 they thought would be the better option than Aaron Jones in 2024 and 2025. Now it's up to the Packers to show that they were right. And um, it is a tough pill to swallow. I would have loved for them to keep both in all sincerity or, or just even maybe just stick with Aaron Jones. But there's a lot of like, it's a, it's a coin flip probably at worst that the next two years of, if you had to put production next to each other, um, if you had to, if I had to bet money today, who has a better 2024 and 2025 combined Josh Jacobs or Aaron Jones, not knowing of course, where Aaron Jones is playing. I probably put money down on Josh Jacobs just because of age. And Jones is coming off the most injured year of his career. Um, that's the, there's legit concerns there. Like I, I, you guys heard me say before, I'm nervous about it. I'm anxious about it. I hate how it could potentially affect the locker room. I, I don't like a lot of those things. But there's a reason that you go in that direction. And like I said before, I can see the vision behind it. That's all I want. No GM is going to bat a thousand. They're going to get things wrong. This could be easily one that they get wrong. But I can understand the vision behind it, even if it's not necessarily what I would have done, even if it's not necessarily something that I agree with. I see what he's trying to do. And I can appreciate that aspect of it because um, nobody's perfect at this. And it means I could have it wrong too. It could mean that. Uh, I like Jacobs is better and Jacobs ends up being better and that could be a no brainer. And we might look back in two years and be like, man, remember when we were concerned about Josh Jacobs and uh, Aaron Jones, and then Jones went out in 2024 and played in four games and then retired in 2025 or like got like a one year, $3 million deal in 2025. And that was basically it. Meanwhile, Josh Jacobs went on to be an all pro in 2024 and had an awesome year in 2025. Like that's, that's a real situation and scenario you usually bet on the younger running backs. So I guess that not necessarily the move I would have made definitely have nervousness about it, but I can understand the decision. Even if I, again, don't, I'm not necessarily in love with it. Uh, what should we expect from Stokes at this point made the roster and hope for a comeback? Yeah, he's probably not going anywhere, but if I'm green Bay, I'm not necessarily penciling him in anywhere. I just kind of, he's going to probably make the 53. He's a, a wild card at this point. Uh, um, and you just kind of hope for the best. You don't know what you're going to get. And if he can, if he can play well, you can play like rookie Eric Stokes. You found something that's going to help in 2024. If he's the guy we've seen the last two years, even when he's been healthy, uh, it's not going to be as great. And then you, uh, then you end up probably really needing corners. Uh, Appella, it's not just Jones versus Jacobs though. Jacobs is a workhorse. We'll see less Dylan or other running back too with Jacobs as our guy. Maybe but I don't necessarily think that green Bay really wants to go ultra in that direction either. I don't think you necessarily want to be a workhouse uh, workhorse in this day and age. I bet they still go out and get a number two. And I bet they still have a pretty significant role with the team, whether that's via the draft or free agency or Emmanuel Wilson grabs that spot. I still think they, they ultimately have a one, two punch in some capacity would be my guess. Well, Brian, the, the hope is that they found their good running back, right? The hope is that they found it in Josh Jacobs. Now we just have to kind of wait and see. 
I do. I also do not think Dylan comes back in any capacity. Thoughts on Jacob's number of carries in his short career. Yeah. Those, those are things that you have to work out as well. Um, just bringing it up really quick here. Oops. Sorry for the wait. All right. So he had in 2019 as a rookie. Um, these are snaps. These snaps aren't brutal. Where is Carrie's act? One second here. All right. So attempts. So he had 233 touches last year, 340 the year before that. That was the really grind him into the ground season. And you can tell maybe why his 2023 season was a little bit tough to come back from after that. Other than that, all the other years you can live with, but he does have 1,305 carries on his body. Uh, I just want to take a look at this in comparison. Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones in his career has less rushing attempts. Is that a real thing? That can't be real, right? Holy shit. Josh Jacobs in five seasons has 1,300 carries. Aaron Jones in seven seasons has 1,100 carries. That is insane. That is absolutely insane and not something I would have guessed. So yeah, great point. I'm going to tweet that out in a second. Wow. I did not, I did not expect that coming. I'm like double checking it to like, am I actually reading this right? Aaron Jones, uh, 1,177. These are just regular season carries, but 1,177 carries. Josh Jacobs, 1,305, at least per pro football reference. Um, and Jones has more yards, by the way, too, and 200 less carry or 130 less carries has almost what? 400 more yards. Yeah, basically 400 more yards. Interesting. Interesting is what I'll say. No, I know I know Jones has missed time. I know he played under McCarthy. I know they've never given him the full slot of carries. I know all of those things, guys. Trust me. Uh, but that is that is still a really crazy number. Nope, not everything, Gabe. Absolutely. And remember, Jacobs is built a little bit different than Jones, too. You know, Jones is, what, 5'9", 208. Jacobs is... 5, 10, 223, you know, that extra 15 pounds definitely matters too. Um, and my guess is it's actually probably a little bit more than that potentially, but yeah, that is still a very telling number. Very, very interesting. All right, guys, probably a couple more questions and I'm probably going to get out of here, start watching some tape. I was watching some 2023 highlights of Jacobs and obviously it was very long, but I saw that he's still pretty explosive if he gets ahead of steam. Yep. He, listen, he's still a really talented running back. Again, it just depends. Do you see the 2022 version, or do you see the 2023 version? Yep. That's part of the vision, James. You're getting younger at safety, or are you still getting a 24 going on 25 year old player? Jacobs is 26 instead of the, you know, th soon to be 30 that Aaron Jones is definitely, definitely trying to get, continue to get younger and build around that core timeline and age of the current players that are currently on the team. Yeah, I, Aaron Jones to Dallas, definitely something I could see happening. What else we got here? Yeah, so officially Jones not a June 1st. Leonard Floyd to the 49ers. That's an interesting move. Yeah, I saw Grassy posts legitimately devastated that Aaron Jones won't be on this team. I think a lot of us feeling that way possible, but isn't quorum like 25. If you're getting younger, Blake quorum might not be the way to go, uh, but it's within the realm of possibility. Sure. Uh, Packers now did the press release on David Bakhtiari as well. Um, we want to thank David for an exceptional 11 seasons in Green Bay. From the moment he arrived, David established himself as one of the premier tackles of his generation, one of the best linemen in the history of the Packers. His commitment and impact on the field and in the locker room cannot be overstated. We look forward to his inevitable induction in the Packers Hall of Fame. We hope for the best for David and his family. 
Uh, David is one of the best offensive linemen that has played in the NFL during my time in the league. His consistency and approach to his craft is unmatched, said LaFleur. David's presence extended beyond his impact on the field and was a cornerstone of the Packers in the locker room when I arrived and was a great resource to our young team. We wish the best for David, his wife, Frankie, and their daughter, Felix, in the future. Crazy day. Crazy, crazy, crazy day. All right, let's get rid of that. All right. Do not see Dylan coming back. Hey, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. All right. Big Mike, hardly used Jones. Not shocked his numbers are lower than Jacob's numbers. Seems like he was undervalued in 27. Of course, absolutely. That was always crazy. Justice Mosqueda. How's it going, buddy? You want to come in and chat? Let me uh, let me see if I can get you in here. Sending you an invite, buddy. Oh, we can never have enough Justice Mosqueda. I'm losing my voice anyway, so if I can utilize you to uh, pick up the slack for my... My mom, this is a, this is a live text from my mom. Are they really trading Aaron Jones? And did you see that coming? Uh, mom, if you're listening, they are not trading Aaron Jones. They definitely did release him though. And I did not see that coming per, uh, per me and my now, I think that might've been my first ever, uh, old takes exposed tweet overtime stream. Yeah. Hey, if justice willing to hop in, we will go to overtime. Eric, I totally agreed. We'll see if we get some surprise justice. No, no sign of justice yet. What was your favorite moment or memory of the Packers releases? Bakhtiari, Jones, and Campbell. Oh, Bakhtiari. Well, the Bakhtiari situation where he flipped off the Bears this year was pretty freaking amazing. Or Bears fans, I guess. Um, I don't know if you know the story there, too. When, uh, when that happened, I posted a video of Bakhtiari in that game and nobody had found the flipping off of bears fans yet. And he replied back to me on the highlight that I posted from the game. And he's like, Oh, I thought you were going to post the highlight of what happened between that play. And I'm like, please hold. And I went and I found it. And of course he's there and he's flipping, flipping it off. And, and the rest was sort of history from there. I think that probably was like my only interaction with Bakhtiari too. Um, but that, or no, there was maybe a couple other ones. Um, but my my favorite memory of uh, Bakhtiari is me watching him on tape every single day when I did the uh, grading the pack uh, and, and grading every player and every play and just the insane consistency. And it's just like, he was just Neo in the matrix with his hand behind his back, just fighting these amazing athletic edge rushers. Um, and yeah, it was, it's just a joy to watch. So that's my favorite Bakhtiari, just the, the every Monday putting his tape on and just being wowed. That's my favorite Bakhtiari. Aaron Jones, um, I was at that Buccaneer game when he like he was barely used. I think he didn't even get in until overtime, and he gets one carry in overtime and takes it for a game-winning touchdown. That's up there. The waving by in Dallas, like everything in Dallas uh, for Aaron Jones is amazing, but the waving by, um, jumping in the, the, um, you know, the end zone, so many of those things were incredible. Um but the, the, the Buccaneer win when you were still getting to know Aaron Jones was such a cool moment. That's probably one that stands out. I don't know that I have a, a Campbell moment off the top of my head. Uh, I'm sure there's probably one out there, but like I don't have like this super memorable, oh my God, Devondre Campbell made this incredible play. I know that all pro season, he had a couple big time interceptions, but I can't honestly remember either of them off the top of my head. I don't know that I have like this, like I said, this amazing Campbell moment, but uh. I will say like just the fact that that season, you know, mid, one year, $2 million deal end of free agency. And, uh, you know, he, he was such an awesome signing that year. That was, that was really a lot of fun. Wasn't that, I thought that was, uh, I thought it was Quay who had the pick six last year. Was it, did Campbell have one last year too? I don't know. I think he's coming. I think he just tweeted something out that he's coming. We'll see. All right. Um, now we know why McCarthy was saving Jones all those years. He needed him fresh for when he left the Packers. <laughs> oh, that's well done, Arian. He's McCarthy was playing chess, not checkers this whole time, saving him for his Dallas run in 2024. 
Uh, release of 33 hurts more than 17 and 12. They wanted to go, not 33. Really not having a tough time. Jonesy was my favorite player of all time. Yeah, I saw a lot of people um, related to Jordy Nelson. That feels uh, very similar. Although I do think you could see the end of the road with Jordy more than you could with Jones at this point. Like we saw the decline after the, all the injury issues. <laughs> oh man. He is here, maybe. Oh, he's not adding on. What's going on? Oh, no. Why can't I get justice in the thing? Oh, here's why. There we go. ¿Cómo estamos? How we doing? Good. How are you, man? Uh, Still at the in-laws after two weeks. That's not fun. No, but <laughs> free agency. So the show must go on. And yes. I still have uh, my wrestling mask, so. G give me, give me, we've had a billion things happen. Uh, give me your, just go. I'm mean, just take the floor, my friend. Um, surprised about the running back moves, but outside of that, yeah, kind of stock, right? I mean, the Packers had a massive safety need, they signed the big safety who surprisingly didn't get franchise tagged and had a connection with the coach on the staff, right? Like, I don't think that shocks anyone. Um, Bach release was pretty predictable. Yep. I went back and watched the Josh Jacobs stuff today. I'm jealous. I think man. people are overrating how bad he was last year. He got better at like mid season. Whenever that like Lions Bears stretch started to happen, um, he was better. And then unfortunately, you know, he probably made it five games like that and then ended up getting hurt. But, um, We'll see what happens. I mean, he was basically given the uh, Aaron Jones deal, yep. which functionally is like a two-year contract, right? Like, it's not – I know everyone's going to say four years, $48 million, but I yeah, mean, that's he, he's basically getting no guaranteed money after this season, so. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm with you there, uh, especially from the contract standpoint. I, I think the contract will end up being fine for Jacobs. I, I am interested. I'm excited to go back and watch his tape in, in greater detail. Obviously, some of like the advanced numbers were were not great on Jacobs this past year. Um, the Jones thing is just, I think, the thing that is the the most surprising of everything. Uh, that that still feels odd and weird. But the McKinney thing is is not out of left field in any way. I think there was uh, certainly some buzz there, and he's just such a perfect fit in that post safety position. So you, I, I saw that you think he's going to play in the post. I do. You don't think so? You think he's going to play in the box? No, I, I, I it, it wasn't. I just, I just wasn't sure. I just wasn't sure. To be I, honest, here's the thing that, that I that said. That defensive scheme is a little bit different, right? Um, you know, they are split safety. You know, more than more than not, um, it basically comes off that Rex Ryan tree and all that stuff. I mean, he does have ball skills, right? It's like something like 16 PBUs the last uh, two or 26 PBUs the last three seasons. He's got something like eight interceptions. You know, he makes plays on the ball. I, I just wasn't sure if we were for sure going to place him at the uh, post safety spot or a drop down or honestly, like even if they have another hybrid guy and they just want to rock and roll those guys. Right. And just that's, play it left. Right. Like that's something that they can do with them too. I think is he's, an, he's versatile enough that he can kind of do a little bit of everything. That's exactly one of the things that I said as well as I think he, he brings the versatility where if you do want to be versatile at that position and you do want to, like you said, bounce him back and forth, you can easily do that. I think he fits in primarily at that spot, but it, to your point, a lot of it probably depends also on who they get at that other spot. Um, yeah. I think if it's, if it's probably just a, you know, no name, someone, no name, bunch of numbers um, at uh, that other spot, then I think you probably see a lot of McKinney in the post. I think if you do find somebody that can ultimately play a little bit of both as well, then I think they switch it up a little bit more. He can absolutely do both, but I, I love the way he potentially fits it as the, uh, the post safety. But here's here's one other numbers or the I don't know if you saw this from Next Gen Stats. Xavier McKinney forced a tight window on a league leading 38% of his targets when aligned as a safety last season. Uh, McKinney will join a Packers team that forced a tight window on just 12.4% of pass attempts in 2023, third lowest in the NFL. He was better than Jordan Fuller, jo uh, Jesse Bates, Kyle Hamilton, and Justin Simmons, who were the next group on that list for safeties. Maybe just go yeah, the, the Jesse Fuller, Bates too. thing is going to be interesting because that's a guy who's going to get a lot of comparisons, comparisons and 
contrastments, I guess, um, between the two, because, you know, Jesse Bates was kind of the big safety last year, right? Yep. He was able to hit the open market. Now, um, what was it? I think I saw it was on APY, which is, you know, the average per year. Uh, McKinney is now third for multi-year deals because, you know, yeah, Winfield got the tag, but that's not a multi-year contract. Um, but on Derwin, he's behind um, Fitzpatrick, and both of those guys are, you know, pro bowlers. So the expectation, I mean, make no mistake about it. I mean, the Packers did kind of set the market for not what, – what is this? That's just a Josh Jacobs markup. It says uh, Josh Jacobs looks like a natural on the Packers. And then uh, Ari says this still feels super weird. <laughs> but, yeah. I thought we signed another guy. I was like, uh-oh, I got to take the mask off and start typing. I, yeah, no, seriously. I, today's been insane is like, I had multiple meetings today and just as everything happened, I was like just going into the meeting or just starting to drive the stupidest setup for me ever today. I was such an idiot, but it, uh, I, I, I popped in one of your, uh, earlier videos. And as soon as I get into it, you're like, I gotta go guys. <laughs> I know. <it's>, uh, <laughs> oh, I was so pissed. I was so, so pissed. Um, I joked, I did this the last time I accidentally scheduled something the day of free agency, was in 2019 when they signed everyone. And I was just, I was literally putting on a training for like 30 people and I couldn't do anything. It's not like I could stop and tweet mid training and be like, hold on guys, Packers yeah. signed somebody. I was, it was the worst day of my life. It was so awful. I was just like, I was in hell because all of this stuff was happening and I could not do anything. Um, so I just need to schedule a bunch of shit. Uh, anytime free agency starts and the Packers will do everything. Crack the code. Um, I, I am surprised that they were so active today. I will say that. I mean, I, I didn't think, think I, I would, that, that, like signing a running back two hours into the tampering period was going to be on the list. As a as a full time content provider, Justice, uh, there are weeks where you will get absolutely nothing at all, and then in one day, in one day, we get a David Bakhtiari release, an Aaron Jones release, John Running Jr. is gone, Tyler Davis is back. Darnell Savage is gone. Xavier McKinney is a Packer. Josh Jacobs is a Packer. We are six hours and one minute, five hours, six hours and one minute into free, into the tampering period. In six hours and one minute, all of that stuff happened. I am, uh, I'm very not happy. And, and Spoons is breaking news about the defense. Did you see uh, a couple things? He said, um, I think it was with the Campbell release a couple okay. days ago. He said that. Uh, he thinks Quay Camp uh, Quay Walker is going to end up playing the one linebacker spot, which yep, I thought I was saw that. Um, because I don't know. I mean, I guess McDuffie is the mic at that point, and then <laughs> I was like, reading that too, and I'm like, I don't know that they have a mic or a strong side guy, or how much are you even going to play three linebackers? We'll see, but yeah. um, I don't know how much it's going to matter. But yeah, I but did there, see there that. was that, and then he said with the Savage stuff, right? Um, Savage was a guy that they said. Um, they wanted to try out at nickel, but they wanted Keyshawn to play the nickel. So they're trying to re-sign him and bring him back at, at the slot spot. That's the second thing he's posted about, uh, you know, them really wanting Keyshawn back. Um, if there is anything else that happens today, I kind of feel like it's going to be that. Like they just re-sign Keyshawn. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about Keyshawn and like being their slot guy? Bring him back. I, I've been on record as you know, hey, three spots, four corners, let them fight. Stokes and Stokes and Keyshawn, someone's got to be on the field, right? I, so, I heard that you said cornerback is a big need this offseason. That's what I remember. A massive you said. need. I said trade up, <laughs> trade up. Don't wait for one to fall to you. I mean, I, I, I'm, I've never felt better about they're picking an offensive lineman than today, not only just because of the guys. Or I, I guess you know spending money elsewhere and you know solidifying the safety spot. It's not like you know unless you thought DeGene was going to be one of those guys. Um, you know there's not going to be guys really available at 25. But you're looking at how much money some of these guys are making. Like uh, what was his name? Robert Jones, that kid from uh, Miami who signed with Carolina. Twenty million. Said a hundred million dollar deal. He's not a top ten guard. Nope. John Runyon Jr. just left ten per year. Like this is a, guys 25 and we're talking about, you know, maybe adding a guard or adding competition in the tackle room or, or whatever it may be. Like, I don't think that's a stretch anymore. Like if we we're just talking about value at the position, teams are desperate. Yep. No, I'm, I'm right there. I think offensive line is as important as anything right now. And 
Um, I like Walker. Um, I'm not sold wholeheartedly on Sean Ryan just being like, yep, we're good to go. And I, I think everyone knows how I feel about Josh Myers. It's it's mostly fine, but I think well, there's like no depth on that team either, right? No, and the, other, the, the other thing too is okay, they they let Runyon walk. The issue wasn't Runyon can't play. The issue is is Runyon really worth ten million dollars per year? Yep. Right. All of those guys on the line, and they're all young, but they're all on one to two year deals remaining. I mean, everyone was drafted 2022 or later or, or earlier, right? Um, Myers. So yeah. there's no depth behind them. Are you going to pay all these guys moving forward? Like that's a position where it's a good offensive line class. Like start thinking about the future and maybe this ends up saving you, you know, $25 million per year down the line. Right. I would not be shocked. Uh, if they draft four offensive linemen on their 11 picks this year, if they, I mean, who knows how many they actually end up taking, they could end up with more or less, but I, I easily could see them going three, four offensive linemen this year. Yeah. It, they need depth. I mean, outside, I, I know they've been stashing those tackles for forever, right? I mean, the last two seasons. Tenuta time. Did, yeah. The, at the end of the roster, Caleb Jones, Tenuta, um, just have kind of been hanging out, um, waiting for this moment, but, you know, add some competition there at the very least, right? That that's all we're asking for. At guard, we have Newman, right? And then at center, I don't think there's any depth at center. I just I want to ask you this because you actually hit. The, I was just about to ask you this, and you uh, were starting to go right into it. Um, crap! Why can't I pull this up? Why is Royce Newman not in the over the cap system? What the hell is going on? Uh, he said to make like three uh, million. No, no. Uh, three point two million. Three point two million is Royce. Yes, Newman's because he pick. he got the yep. so he got the the uh, pay the based or the uh, incentive like the the snap based incentives performance so, escalators or whatever. Yeah. Um, his dead cap is one hundred twenty four thousand. So you you know three point one mil. Uh, you basically save and obviously have to replace that with a you know minimum player at least anyway. But three point one mil you save by moving on from Royce Newman. But we're starting to see like not great offensive linemen go for 10 million per year. I'm like, I just thought this whole time, like, yeah, they're easily going to release yeah. Royce Newman and not pay him 3.2 million this year. Now I'm like almost wondering of like, is that almost like a okay deal for Royce? I still don't think it is, but like now I'm actually questioning myself. No, on a one year deal. I don't think like to have him pushed out, it's going to be a talent thing. I would think. Right, it all it all depends on what they're able to add in the draft and stuff like that. I don't think that they're going to be like super active in the free agency market, um, even for those later guys, because it's not like again. I think there's going to be depth in this draft class. What they really need is like young guys under contract, right? Yeah, and that's that's the thing that they're kind of struggling with right now. So, no, that makes sense. I, I think that Newman could get pushed out. But it's going to depend on the draft, and it's going to happen after the draft. It's, it's not going to happen right now. They're not going to use that money on free agency otherwise. Yeah, you're probably, you you might very well be right there. A um, couple super chats really quick. Uh, John said, what's our cap looking like now? Mo much more money for free agents. Um, I don't know what the exact number is, but uh, I think you're probably more in like the value uh, aspect of free agency right now rather than um, any more big-time free agents. They still have the ability to open up uh, as much, you know, I'll say as much, but obviously not as much, but they have ability to open up space if they want to go out and get somebody big. I'm I'm still more of the mind that they've probably exhausted their really big free agent signings, maybe yeah. bringing back a Keyshawn Nixon, maybe a couple value signings here and there, but I, I'm not expecting any more mountain moving from Goody moving forward. I agree. Like for, for if you told me the next last big deal, I hope you're still there. Might have lost justice. All right. I think I'm still here. I'll get justice back when he's, uh, are you back? Am I back? I think you're back. Oh, uh, I, I was just Gilman saying. Back with the Chargers, by the way. He's back? Yeah, Lohi Gilman back with the Chargers, so he will not be a Packer. So he was an interesting guy because of Ansley, right? Because yep. now we have Ansley. He was the DC there with the Chargers. Yeah, that would have been the one. But uh, so yeah, you were saying you you agree probably just bargain free agent signing from here. Yeah, I mean, if you told me Keyshawn for four million was the last big signing that the Packers had left in them this offseason, I would I wouldn't be surprised at all. I mean, maybe they look at 
you know, a couple million dollar linebacker, right? But like we've seen kind of the linebacker market move already, and there's not that many guys. I don't know. Maybe that's one where they could add somebody, but that's that's about it, in my opinion. Yeah, we're on the same page there. Um, is uh, McKinney more like Leroy or Nick Collins, in your opinion? Do we have to pick one? No, you don't have to. You can do whatever you want, Justice. You're wearing the mask. Um, Is there a safety that you think he comps to? Think. I was trying to think of one. I, I couldn't think of like a perfect comp for him. Um, I actually said from a Packer safety standpoint, he reminds me more of like a Darren Sharper than any of those two, but I don't even like perfectly like that one either. Yeah, that, that honestly, that, that does think he had such a bad stretch of safeties for a while. You yeah. know what? He's better than the other Alabama safety that we used to have. Ha huh? Yes. Oh, a million percent. <laughs> actually, it's interesting you say that though. Like he was like, I feel like a, a comp for him would almost be like what you were hoping haha was going to be like what, you, what your ideal version yes. of haha Clinton Dix was is what Xavier McKinney is that, that actually might be my favorite comp so far in your, in your favorite thoughts of haha Clinton Dix and what you thought he was going to be coming out, put that on Xavier McKinney. And that to me fits. Oh, we lost justice again. All right. We might have to, I know justice having some internet issues. Um, I got one more super chat and then I probably have to bounce pretty quick here as well. I might try to bring justice on one more time here at the end, but uh, do people not realize Jordan love is going to be parading the Lombardi at next year's draft in green Bay. It's going to be lit. Hey, there is nothing better Lee than if in 2025 uh, the Packers are picking 32 overall and celebrating that super bowl uh, during the draft and picking 32nd overall. Um, all right. What else we got here? Carlton Davis traded to the Lions. That's interesting. Didn't get a chance to see that yet. <laughs> the in-laws Wi-Fi strikes again. Damn in-laws. No, there's 0% chance of this happening, Renji. No no chance Antoine Winfield will be a Green Bay Packer. Also, like, just no reason that you would put that much money into safety. That, that would not be a, a smart choice. Uh, who's better, Xavier McKinney or Nick Collins? Nick Collins. Nick Collins better than Xavier McKinney. So the Packers got Josh Jacobs from the Raiders. James, where have you been? Yes, uh, Josh Jacobs will be a Packer. Again, remember that these deals cannot be finalized until Wednesday, so there's always the possibility that these things could fall through a little bit. Uh, but yes, he is set to become a Green Bay Packer. <laughs> uh, you guys are the best. All right. Uh, we've been going for almost... Uh, ooh, is Justin Fields moving to Canada? Is there a team in Canada? What are, what are we doing? Which is oh, like CFL. Are we talking CFL here? I don't know where Justin Fields ends up. I will say this. This is a great maybe way to end. There is nothing that's made me happier this off season than a pretty sizable chunk of bears fans that were convinced. And I think some are still convinced that, um, they had to keep Justin Fields because, he was finally developing to some level and there's no way they could possibly risk moving on from Justin Fields. Cause he still was going to be the guy. Nobody wants Justin Fields. No other NFL team is any interest in making him the starting quarterback. And every team that is in need of a quarterback would give anything to trade up and take their, their pick at quarterback. I think it's uh, to me very clearly Caleb Williams, but whatever quarterback that might end up being like, they would give anything to be at number one in this draft with the quarterbacks that are out there. And some bears fans were like, they just have never seen a good quarterback. They've never seen a good quarterback that a completely mid starter that no other team wants. Like they were convinced wholeheartedly. We can't, we can't upset this. We can't possibly go in another direction, even though we were gifted the number one overall pick in the draft with a potential franchise altering quarterback that's out there at number one. We can't do that. We got it. We got to keep Justin Fields. That is my favorite thing of this entire off season so far. Um, just beyond insane to me, but it was, it was beautiful in all the best ways. Sorry, Renji. You're going to have to make some updates in Madden, my friend. Uh, let's see. Interesting tweet from Ken Ingles on the cap and being able to keep Aaron Jones. All right. What do we got from Ken here? Uh, let's see.
Uh, he said that it's not a June 1st cut. I don't know. Is, is there anything else I'm missing? I don't see anything else from Ken that like stands out to me. But if there is, let me know. I'll try to comment on it. Uh, El Shahir would probably be my guess. That would actually be a real... If you're looking for like a fun, maybe um, like value inside linebacker signing, El Shahir is actually a pretty decent option. I think he'd pair very well with Quay Walker. Matt, I've said this for forever now. I will believe Green Bay has a top 10 D when they get to the end of the year and finish with a top 10 D. Marcus Davenport to the Lions, that doesn't move the needle. It, it moves the needle just as much as it did when he moved to the Vikings, which is I did not care at all. Um, so yeah. Why would we not post June 1st cut? What do we gain by making it a pre-June 1st cut? It, again, it's all just like accounting. It, if anything, it probably tells me that... Um, there, they might be a little bit more in like the the clear now for any more big free agent signings, um, but I think the big thing with with uh, you know Devondre is there was a, a lot more money to save there. But again, guys, they can open up money however they want to open it, um, and also if they need to open more money now, they they can't do that for June first. The June first for Campbell made sense because it's going to save eight million after June first. They can do all their free agent spending. Remember, they need about $8 million in like a slush fund for the season, for injured reserve, for a practice squad, for guys signing through the season and all those sort of things. So you can use that $8 million. You can spend all of your money knowing that you're going to get $8 million in June 1st. That's going to be able to cover you through the season. So you can kind of go do that now. Adding more money that you can't spend until June 1st probably doesn't do anything for you right now. So you don't June 1st, Jones. You get his savings immediately right now that you do get. And then you can still restructure some guys if you actually go need to go out and spend more money in free agency. So no, no issues with the way that they've done that at all. Uh, do you think McKinney is at the peak of his development or is there room for growth there? He's 24. So I think there's still room for growth. And I think he could fit this defense much, you know, even better than what he did in New York. But, um, yeah, I think we're, you're probably seeing what you get. He probably took his biggest step last year. And I think all you're hoping for right now is that he's the same guy you saw in New York last year. If you can get two, three years of Xavier McKinney that we saw in New York last year. You'll be very, very satisfied with this deal. Eric, I do, but I think they're going to stick with um, with Anders. And then I think they'll bring in some competition even more than um, you know they brought in so far. Uh, so I do think there'll be competition. I probably would have gone a little bit more aggressive there, but it seems like they're going to give Anders every opportunity to win that job. Dylan, I'm with you. Good call. This is an interesting one, Matt. Uh, my biggest answer to this is they made a mistake. If nothing else, they should have at least transitioned them to see if they like have the right of first refusal and or maybe just make it like less attainable of, for teams to sign them to a big deal. But I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know if they undervalued his market, but uh, his agent did a good job getting him to free agency. I'll say that much. His, his agent did a really good job. I thought, I thought simply put that it was just a mistake from New York. Yeah, I guess, you know, if you did a Justin Fields, Aiden O'Connell, Gardner Minshew, you know, battle in the off season, fine. I don't know. The Raiders are in no man's land anyway. All right. I don't think Armstead's getting any cheap deals, Austin, but if they could make it work, by be my guest. I'd be all for that as well. All right, friends. Um, hour 47, hour 48 minutes here going on. I am going to call it a day for now. If As soon as I get off, of course, something will break and I'll probably have to do a third one of these. But it's been a joy chatting with you guys. Thank you for all the super chats. We had over 2,000 people in here for the vast majority of this. So it's been a ton of fun. Um, I will talk to you guys all soon. We'll have episodes out tomorrow. Tons of different stuff going on. What a freaking day. I'm exhausted already. It's only 5, 18 p.m. I will talk to you guys soon. Have a great, great night. Until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.